today I want to talk to you about patching and Dante controller in order to prepare a multi-track recording session in Ableton. So you may know how recently, even even before we made the decision to venture into church online, we have been multi-track recording our services, our worship sets rather, in Ableton Live. And also, as you may know, we use Dante for uh, transmission and for receiving of all audio uh, as it pertains to coming from computers, right? So everything we do in Ableton, you know, playback, recording, that's all made possible through Dante. So I'm going to show you uh, not only how to make that happen by showing you the patching in Dante controller, but as well as what you need to do in Ableton to uh, prepare that session and be able to record all of your tracks off the console. So what you're looking at now on the screen is this is a software called Dante Controller. And this is basically the place, this is like the central place where you decide what audio comes from where, goes where, is sent where. This is this is the hub of all that's happening in the world of Dante. So I want to start by just showing you my device list here. We got the Behringer X32 Compact Mixing Console, of course, because that's our console of choice. And uh, that's made possible because of the Dante physical sound card that we've installed in the back of the console, which you're seeing a photo of right about now. That makes it possible for the mixing console to become a Dante compatible device. You know, there's Ethernet ports in there, primary, secondary, that allow you to connect to an Ethernet switch and make it a part of your Dante network. So that's how that's possible. The same is sort of the case for the other two devices here. We have, you know, our campus code and then Ableton, then campus code multi-track, um, Ableton, this is our playback computer, so we send normally eight channels out of Ableton, you know, uh, click, bass, stereo loop, stereo uh, guitars, uh, stereo aux stems, so anything keys, anything other weird instruments, as well as uh, video and everything. I mentioned earlier that the X32 has a physical sound card in it, making it possible to become part of the Dante network, right? So... Now I'm going to show you how it's possible that these computers are becoming a part of the Dante network, and that is through the power of Dante Virtual Sound Card. So I mentioned earlier I said that there was a physical sound card. Well, this is quite literally a virtual sound card. So if you don't know about DVS, then it's a license that you get. I think it's about $50 for each machine you're trying to get on the network, and you install that. You tell Dante how many channels you want to receive, send out. 32 by 32 basically means we're receiving 32 channels. We have the ability to send 32 channels. So in the multi-tracking case, we won't really need to send 32 channels anywhere. All we're trying to do is take in those 32 channels and more on that here in a minute once we get into Ableton. But set your latency, make sure you have the right switch selected, and boom, we're here. Now let me show you what happens if you do not have Dante Virtual Sound Card enabled. Your machine will not show up on the network at all. So make sure you have DVS started. Machines are gonna pop back up on the on the device list here. Some of my subscriptions may have restarted. Well no, we're good. And you can actually close out DVS now that you have everything set. You can close it. Um, I believe even if you like restart your machine, like DVS will stay active until you go in the app and press stop so that's pretty cool so now i'm going to show you how you would patch a multi-tracking session in dante controller so i'm going to unfold my uh, behringer x32 console in the transmitters list and my cpc ableton machine in the receivers list because remember we're trying to receive audio from the console to record into this machine am i right so we have Behringer X32 highlighted next to transmitters, CPC Ableton highlighted under receivers, and we're going to unfold that. So you can see here that I have my inputs labeled. I have a great article for you to read by my awesome friends over at the tech team at Life Church, who wrote an amazing article about how to uh, label your inputs in Dante Controller. So I suggest if you don't know about that, I suggest you go and check that out. Love those guys over there. Shout out to them. And uh, 
I have all my inputs labeled, so that will make it easier for us to decide what input is going to what channel. So, for example, if I wanted the Keys Talkback channel from the console to go to uh, input 1 on my uh, multi-tracking computer, I can just keep on going down here and checking these subscriptions. But, man, this is the, this is the way that a lot of people go with when they're doing this, but... They just they just go down the grid and they just check, make sure they have the right channel selected, whatever, you know. But there is a faster way to do this that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to unsubscribe these and I'm going to show you the faster way to do this. So I'm going to press CPC Ableton. I'm going to double press that. And that's going to open up the device view. Now you see I have the receive tab checked and I see 32 channels of nothing here. Nothing is nothing is subscribed to these channels. But I'm going to go to Available Channels over here. I'm going to unfold Behringer X32C, and I see all of my channels here. Now, remember, this is the faster way to do all this patching. And I think I'm going to go in here, and I'm actually going to unfold this so you can see that all this, all these are channels are about to get subscribed. So I'm going to open up Device View again, make sure I'm on the Receive tab, make sure I'm under the CPC Ableton computer. I'm going to shift, or I'm going to click, sorry, the first channel under Behringer X32C. I'm going to go down to the last one. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click here too. All of my tracks have been selected. Now I'm simply just going to drag them over and watch what happens. All of these tracks just got, or all of these channels rather, just got subscribed into unicast channels to just completely one-to-one -one all the way to the CPC Ableton machine. So in a matter of seconds, I was able to make subscriptions to all of these or from all of these channels to all of the ones on the Ableton machine so that's the faster way but if you feel more comfortable going down the grid checking one by one that is perfectly fine as well but just know that there's a faster way to do it all right so that is how you would patch the session to make sure that your audio gets to the Ableton recording session so now we're actually going to hop into Ableton and I've prepared a little bit of a, a little bit of a session from scratch here. And I'm going to show you what you need to do in Ableton Live now to make sure that your audio is all passing through and is all patched correctly. So we're going to go straight into the uh, uh, preferences of Ableton. So that's command comma if you're a, if you're a um, commands type person. And we're going to go to audio input device now. A lot of you who use Ableton out there may be used to going straight to audio output device because a lot of you use Ableton for the purpose of audio output, whether that be a headphone cable or Dante or you're using Matty or something like that. Any audio protocol, a lot of you are used to going to audio output device, but since we're trying to multi-track, we're trying to receive, we need to go to audio input device. That's not the one that we want. We want to select Dante Virtual Sound Card. And again, I want to tell you, if you don't have Dante Virtual Sound Card started, then you will not see it in the list of uh, input devices or output devices available. So definitely make sure you have DVS started before you try any of this. That's the number one thing. But you'll notice we're still not able to do anything because we don't have to have an output device. We do have to have an output device to be able to do anything in Ableton, to be able to get any playback. So... Here is where I will just check MacBook Pro speakers just so that they'll let us pass it in so we can start working. All right. So input config. This is where you tell Ableton what channels you're going to be using and what they will be called. So I went I went and prepped a little list here. You know, I got just keys talk back, a few vocal channels, uh, keys left and right, click, bass, just classic stuff. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back out here. I'm going to tab over to session view. And I'm going to create a few new channels here. Now, once again, I understand that a lot of you may be used to selecting audio 2, you know, as far as output. And you're going to say audio 2, external out. We're not going to be doing that today. So what we're doing today instead is quite actually the opposite. So I'm going to select all these. Audio from is what we're looking at today. So we're going to take audio from, from no input to external in. And now, once you select the box under external in, you will see all of the channels that you named before. And I'm going to just select these and start, you know, sort of just patching these to these channels. You see there's a full list of all of the channels that we set up in uh, input config. So I'm going to get up one more so we can have a little bit of bass here. 
everyone knows it's all about the low end. That was for you, James Attaway. But there we go. So we got all of our channels created here. I'm going to bring these in just a little bit. And now we're going to we're going to try and do a recording. We're going to we're going to go ahead. We're all ready. All the channels are patched. We're good. We are good to go. So let's hit record. Let's go. Uh why 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 is it not recording? Why are we not why are we not I hit record, I patched everything. Oh yeah. That's one thing you guys got to remember when you're getting ready to do this. The absolute last and most important step is to make sure that your tracks are armed to record. You can see before, you can see before, yes, my my uh, mic here that I'm speaking into was metering inside the external in preview menu. But of course, it was not metering in the actual software because it was not ready to record. It's not it's not passing through to the recording process. But, you know, make sure that you're arming your tracks to record. So I'm going to do this one time just so you can just so you can see what's going on here. So basically how you do this, you're going to select every track that you want to arm to record. So in this case, it's all of them, of course. So shift click, select all these tracks and to get all of them, just press and hold command then click this record button here, right? So after we do that, now when we hit record, all of our all of our stuff will be recorded. So that is, you can, and also you can see here on the audio one waveform, you can see in that clip that my mic is being picked up. It's being recorded. So Basically, that's how you can use the power of Dante collaborating with Ableton Live to prep a multi-track recording. And if you ever need a refresher, you can come right back to this video and I will see you guys in the next one.